Okay, and welcome to another edition of Wake Up America. I'm your host, Christina Lynn, and as we're traveling America to find some of the most interesting, fascinating people and to help you, our audience, wake up, we're here again in Los Angeles, California. I'm with my wonderful co host for this event for the Conscious Life Expo. So, Sky Cubby, welcome. Thank you. Sky is a wonderful nutritional coach and he is also launching his own new channel. Mm. So, that's exciting. And you can see a lot of great shows on that channel as well. So, now we have a wonderful guest. I'm going to get right to it because she's fascinating. So, we have Anna Bliss here today. Anna, how are you? Thank you for having me. I love you. Great. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Yes. Yeah, now you are amazing because you are a hypnotherapist who specializes in past life regression therapy. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, now how did you get into this? And tell us, if you will, tell the audience exactly what that is and how you got into this in your journey. Well, I had a spiritual awakening. <laughs> I was kind of forced into it. <laughs> okay. That can happen, right? It, yes, it does. And so on and the that journey, was your wake up, right? It was a huge wake up call. So I basically went from the outside world being so focused on my ego and self serving myself and the world to basically going within. And I realized I had to heal myself and it just happened in layers. And I kept on digging deeper and deeper and deeper and um, I found the Reiki and Theta healing and emotional freedom technique and I got certified in all of those of course. Um, Wonderful. Certified nerd. <laughs> so. uh, on, your, on your search. So what uh -huh. took you then into the field of hypnotherapy? So then just continuing to go digging deeper and okay. hypnosis was really powerful and effective and uh, really helped me, you know, uh, mm -hmm. get to the root of some things, you know, right. and myself. So you found it helpful for yourself. Very helpful. And then I did right. a couple of past life regressions and on myself and I got to see some things in there. And so I just got certified as a hypnotherapist and the next thing I'm regressing hundreds and hundreds of people wow. on wow. the same path, you know, and this quest of healing themselves, finding themselves, understanding themselves. Did you purposely intend to be doing past life regression, regression therapy, I should say? I, I did not actually, and at first I was very, very skeptical to tell you the truth. Wow. I was taking okay. notes and I was still thinking in my mind like, are you guys like making this up? Come on, like, is this for real? I was always like kind of That's doubtful, good. like I was open minded, but yeah. yes, yes, very skeptical. I appreciate you telling us that honestly. Really? What was that defining moment where all of a sudden, Anna, you said, okay, you know what? I believe this. This is real. What, do you remember that? Tell us about that, please. Honestly, I more than believe it. I know it. I yeah. know it like I know it because... Do you remember that one regression or that one time? It wasn't just one. It just happened like multitude, you know? And all okay. these stories, the, the people that were coming to me and their stories and the sincerity. Yes. And maybe one or two people could be making it up, but hundreds and hundreds of people, exactly. come on, you know? So I've had it happen to myself, too, so I know I'm a believer as well. And my own experience, yeah. honestly, you know? So yeah. when you're having the experience yourself, there's just no doubt. Out. When somebody else is telling you about their experience, then it's right. different. But I'm not reading it for them. I put people into a deep state where they're accessing these these uh, lifetimes in themselves, right. and they're having the experience. And I really believe that when when you're having the experience in yourself, that's yeah. when things are real. And yeah. it's so transformative for people. People have, people have amazing, obviously life changing yeah. life experiences. Changing. One yes. session, I've seen literally people's lives change. So what? What is it? What is it yeah. about going Point into the lifetime? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. How do how do they how do they change by going into the lifetime? What are they experiencing, and how does it transform their life? Yeah, and if you could give us an example, yeah. I'd love to hear examples. Uh, right. Um, mm -hmm. So okay, an example for how it changed their life, for the better, of course. What is the yeah. process? How do people how do people um, you know have go through this experience? And I mean, honestly, it, it usually happens when people experience intense uh, pain. Usually. You know, like like a woman, for example, came to me and she had like very severe neck pain, and she couldn't find the answer to why. She went to see chiropractors and doctors, and nobody could help her, which is very persistent. And she figured maybe it was past life related, so she came to me, and we were digging, digging, and I'm really good at identifying 
the lifetime. And so we went and to the very root. I, I like to go to root cause because yes. that's when you really, really heal uh, right. the, the root issue. Treat right? the core, you not treat the, the core. Not, you yeah. don't want to just band aid, you know. And even you got to get that root. Yeah. You got to get there. Dig to the out. very the origin, the origin cause. There's always a trauma point. And these okay. past lives, they go back, you know, before, before you just keep on going further, right. further, oh, yeah. further. Right. And so we found a root cause for her neck, and it was one lifetime she was um, a German guy in the 1800s who came to the U.S. who had uh, throat cancer, and that wasn't it. And she still had, you came back, she still had some pain. And then when we found the root cause, which is, um, it was a very traumatic lifetime, honestly. Oh, okay. She was... Um, she was severely handled and beaten and raped by her slave owner in the South, um, mm. in the in the Americas, in the South. Mm. And she was a black woman at that time, and uh, she was raped on this like um, this big wooden table, and her neck was just like messed up from that. Mm. And she had a lot of resentment and a lot of hate towards this man, mm. and she was carrying this hate in her muscles, like the memory. So when I work with people and releasing. Mm. These memories, I always work with the energy of forgiveness. All right, good for you. Forgiveness is the only thing that helps us heal and love. You have right. to love yourself and you have to access this, this, this unconditional love that releases you basically from this person. You're not punishing somebody else right. when you're not forgiving. You're punishing yourself because right. you're carrying this pain. True. And that's the only way to break the karma between because otherwise you keep repeating the cycle you keep mm -hmm. drawing this person to you because the always the less get off the wheel yeah. karma and it's, it's unconditional forgiveness exactly and unconditional love I remember I learned that from some of Edgar Casey's writings that's it exactly and he was doing past life regressions yeah. too oh yeah he was doing when he was in his trance that's right so yeah. that's the end yeah. result we forgive so. others and, and uh, forgive ourselves ultimately that's right but you're you're not really healing her you're you're channeling it, you're helping her to connect the dots. I'm helping her get into that state of hypnosis where she's accessing these memories inside of her. In our DNA, we have all these memories. And so when she remembered this and when she started to forgive, I could literally see energy moving into her shoulders. It was like like twitching, right? And it was wow. releasing. Like that's how you know when, when you're doing right, even when you're working out and your the muscles are twitching, mm. that's energy releasing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's you know? right. Yes. And so, so literally she experienced instant healing in that session. Oh, wow. And it was profound. I mean, to say the that least. It was profound. profound. It was miraculous, but oh, the miracles yeah. are us. And that's right. We're, we're and that's she just that. had a wonderful guide to guide her through this. Yes. Now, what about phobias? I know that mm -hmm. uh, I've seen people get healed from past life regression. That's right. About phobias. Have you had any examples of that? Maybe even fear of flying or any uh, kind of fears? All sorts. Oh, of course. People have all kinds of, of, of fears, pain, sadness. And it's usually related it's to a trauma that they had maybe in a past life right. or in this life usually? In, yeah. in this life or the past life. But this life is connected to a past right. life. It's connected so to... So do you have another good example? I, I'm fascinated <laughs> with these examples. And hers um, was a very interesting one. Yes. Uh, Does anything of, else come to mind oh, yeah. that was a really interesting one to you? Well, most recently I had a woman and she had a, a lot of grief. She was experiencing a lot of grief and heartache. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I call this shadow work because you're going in the shadow of yourself. You're basically accessing all the darkness that you're not able to consciously see. So that's why it helps to work with somebody who can help you, can guide you into these places that you're not able to access. Right. So It's hard to do it on your, on your own. It's good to have yeah. help. It is. Always. Yeah. It is. Definitely. So that's great. So she has uh, experienced grief uh, for her husband's passing and oh. um, she wanted to come to me to find her husband as a soulmate. She knew that he's her soulmate and she was oh. um, wanting to see where they were connected in a past life. 
And wow. so I was oh. able to help her trace that lifetime back. And uh, she found him in the 17th century in Sweden. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, they lived a very happy life together. They had children. And uh, that was a good one. But I always do two to three lifetimes for contrast. Oh. Yes. And so the second one, I, um, I took her into a lifetime where she was in a 1940s, uh, 1920s, 30s, and 40s. She saw herself as an actress in Hollywood, okay. actually. So This is the same woman? The same woman. Okay. She was a dis different uh, uh, ethnic race uh, okay. than she is currently. And um, so she was seeing herself winning awards and making a lot of money, doing these movies, and mm -hmm. having a big, beautiful house in Beverly Hills, but she was very unhappy. Mm -hmm. And in that oh. lifetime, they were brother and sister. Uh, so they were okay. still connected and she felt this intense love for him, but they were brother and sister. And she never found her soulmate in that lifetime and she was very um, lonely. So she ended up taking her life, mm. took pills and Aww. committed suicide. And so um, when she came out of the regression, she was very shocked, of course, to find out because she's never experienced anything like this. She never had a, a hypnosis, she never had a regression, doesn't even meditate. Mm. So that was surprising wow. for me, of course, that she had the full-on experience remembered names and dates and location and so it's very accurate that way to be able to help someone get to that state who's never experienced a you know being able to see images and stuff like that oh yeah really right. powerful it's very powerful yeah. your, very much uh, so. your current work right now um, mm -hmm. are you writing a book I'm writing um, another book yes. what, uh, what is it about <laughs> so uh, my second book is about self-love healing through self-love. Oh, what is the title of that one? Self-love, the key to all healing is what I'm getting, but it could change. Definitely self-love. I'm Can getting tell the us message about your first book. Yeah, your first book. Yeah. <laughs> Something <laughs> to know more about that one. The first book um, is called Time Travelers, Stories of Reincarnation. Ooh, interesting. It's very interesting. And where can people get that if you'll tell us how people can reach out to you? Well, it is found on my website, higherself-healing.com. Higherself healing.com. It's found okay. on Amazon.com. Great. It's uh, found on BarnesNobles.com. Excellent. And now, who are these time travelers? Um, well, we're all time travelers, in right. a way. In, 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 <laughs> That's in, true. In what way? <laughs> in what way? In what way? Well, we travel through dimensions. We're here, you know, our spirit, our soul comes from other places and we find ourselves in these bodies here in this time, but we're multidimensional and we can access these dimensions through time machines, right, that are not outside of us, they're not machines, so to say, but we, we are, we have this We're capacity. We're the time travelers. We are the time machines. I machine. knew I was a time traveler. <laughs> yes. And so you're, you're experiencing in your sessions, you're traveling through different timelines <coughs> with your clients, right? Yes. And yes. And Instantly. That's great. Yes. That's wonderful. You're able to take them back. And, you know, going back, mm -hmm. it is so connected that it is in our conscious, our subconscious, these past lives. So pulling it forward can be so healing. It's so healing. So to finish the uh, previous story about this person. She, yes, um, please do. When, when she came out of the regression, she was crying and she realized that the reason why he passed away in this lifetime early is because they had a soul contract of some sort that she died in that lifetime. She took her own life, so she had to experience that in this lifetime. But of course, life yeah. keeps going, and um, there will be future lifetimes, possibly, where they will be reconnected. And oh, yeah. time goes in cycles. Time goes in cycles, and yes. we always find each other. You know, the whole point right. of life is us, is yes. to find each other and to connect. Yes. And that connection is love. Yeah. And that love never dies. And love to be each other's teachers. To help to help us you know, like you're doing, you're helping your uh, clients to learn love. Yeah. And to learn forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah. That's it. So you're self love. Helping them to teach mm -hmm. and you're teaching them. Yes. Yeah. And understanding, you know, when yes. you understand yourself, then you see things more clearly and it, that understanding is consciousness and this solves the darkness because light is more powerful than dark, right? None of the darkness right. can take away the light. 
but one single candle, right, can right. light up a whole room. Right, so the little bit of light coming in under the door in a that, dark room lights up the whole that's room. That's right. So yes, what are does. things that, yeah. that you do on a date, because you're so filled with light, what are some <laughs> things you do to maintain that light to on a daily basis that some of the <clears throat> viewers can maybe do themselves? What does your inner practice look like to uh, help with that? I meditate. Honestly, the simplest things, and the human mind likes to complicate things and wants to, you know, figure out and this and that, but it's the simplest things that we can do. And, and the simplest thing is not doing anything. It's just go in the space, meditate, set aside five to ten minutes every day. It's, it's so precious that time, literally, it's a lifesaver. It saved my life and it's the most powerful thing you can do because you're aligning with your higher self, with consciousness, with God, with the universe, and... How do you meditate, Anna? <laughs> How do you meditate? I go into the space, um, so I do, there's different meditations for different things, you know, there's guided meditations you can do. Sometimes I work with my breath, uh -huh. breath is also very what's, important. What's one you know, simple breathing, meditation breathing. you like to do that, that kind of sets your tone for the day? To, to Gratitude. That's my favorite. Oh, gratitude and appreciation. You know, because, yeah. because sometimes it's so hard to get out of the mind, right? Like we find ourselves you know, thinking a lot or things to do or we had a busy day. And I, and I actually even teach one minute meditation. I say, okay, you don't have five minutes, you don't have ten minutes. Do you have one minute to meditate? That's Can great. you take yes. one focused, conscious breath, just closing your eyes and just coming into the body and yeah. coming into the heart, into the gratitude of just, wow, I'm alive. I'm here in this body. I'm here in this time, you know? And right. what can you be grateful for? What can you anchor that gratitude in your life to? And just feel that goodness and just expanding on that. When you do, there's just this amazing feeling. And yeah. That, you know, that that's a well, look, really good. That's think, awesome. You know, <laughs> Thank you so much you for know, sharing uh, all this. You know me, uh, mm -hmm. I like to get out the awakening protocols. Mm -hmm. So can right. you share how you, I like the techniques. How do you connect to your higher self? Um, well, intention is very important. I mean, first of all, sitting down and just like intending. Whatever yes. you intend, whatever yes. you intend, it starts to guide your focus and your energy. So focus is very important. Imagination yeah. is very important. We have all the keys inside of us. Honestly, like, like we can heal our bodies just by fasting, by cutting right. out food and the body heals itself, by breathing, taking in more prana, more life force from the air. We feel ourselves connecting our feet to the earth to the sun it's literally the most basic simple things we can do that is just right. the most profound and most powerful most life-giving things we can do and we have it like love you know can access that through gratitude you don't know a lot of, and actually I have clients that come to me and it's so beautiful and they they don't know how to love themselves and they're just literally there asking how they can learn to love themselves you get to help them well, I'm gonna say so common, so it's